Okay. You're going to either get something out of this video or you're going to be an idiot and not get anything out of it because either one, you're a little bit ignorant, or two, you have a closed mind. I always uh, laugh every time I hear someone talk about, uh, you need to have an open mind. <laughs> it's so funny. There's, uh, what's worse? Let's first start off by talking about that. What's worse than a closed mind? We all know why a closed mind's not so good, right? Um, what's worse than a closed mind? <laughs> One that's completely open. <laughs> um, really open minds is how stupid people, <coughs> Tom Cruise, end up in, <laughs> end up in crazy, sicko cults and people fall for all sorts of nonsense. It's like, oh, you want to borrow my money for a while? Oh, okay, stranger. <laughs> Open minds are way worse than closed minds. Closed minds are not subject to danger. Open minds are uh, kind of like an innocent baby that sticks his hand on the stove. You think, well, that's ignorance. No. I give you a thousand analogies, but yeah, having an open mind is actually way worse than a closed mind. You want actually a gatekeeper at the doors um, that lets uh, what's logical and wise through and lets uh, keeps the BS out. If you like leave your house and you got a lot of fine china and gold and silver and stuff, and you like leave the the doors to your house open, then like scumbags are gonna steal all your shit, right? It's the same thing with the mind. Um, scientific method. Um, there's a huge, huge hole in the scientific method. And actually, this is uh, would piss off. Uh, um, and I spent six years in college. This is going to piss off the people that are uh, academic snobs. You people, I just paid a lot for my college degree. Uh, I believe in the scientific method. That's good that you do. And I'm certainly not poo-pooing uh, innovation and invention. That's one thing, and that follows the scientific method, but scientific method is something wholly different than uh, the correct explanation of how something works. You see, descriptions are not explanations, nor are innovation uh -huh, and invention and discovery part and parcel to the explanation of that innovation, invention, or discovery. Let's go off the list of the scientific method here which uh, in fundamental sense has four steps. Observation and description of a phenomena or group of phenomena. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, formulation of a hypothesis to explain the phenomena. In physics, the hypothesis often takes the form of a casual mechanism or mathematical relation. And math also, too, is about uh, things that are uh, empirically valid and uh, palpable. Math never explains anything. It only defines the parameters of how something can work but it doesn't explain what something is. It's kind of like taking a horse apart in an anatomy class or like, you know, dissecting a frog. Like, well, the heart's here and, you know, this blood vessel and X milligrams of mercury on blood pressure to keep the frog alive and, you know, X microvolts of synaptic function to keep the frog's brain work. That's all fine, but that doesn't describe what a frog is or explain what a frog is. Um, step number three, the use of the hypothesis to predict the existence of other phenomena or predict the quantitative results of new observations. Um, then performance of experimental tests of the predictions by several independent experimenters and properly performed experiments. Mm, okay. Actually, in further, there's usually considered six steps in the scientific method. The question, then the research, then the hypothesis and experiment. You want to collect the data, then you want to analyze the data. And once again, we're talking about data. And then we want to have a conclusions, and then we have repeatability, actually. And then you, you, know, you uh, get, and this is the worst thing in the world in academia, peer, peer review. Like, you know, I've discovered this new phenomena where so-and-so circuit interacts with this. This phenomenon has never been observed before. See if you can repeat my results. And, you know, another scientist on the other side of the world repeats your results. Yeah, congratulations, Bob. You found a new type of uh, electrical phenomena, and then they'll actually uh, try to define it and say, we've deserved a new quantum tunneling of circuitry, and this is the explanation. 
You see, a new type of technology was created by, uh, and usually the scientific method when it comes to experimentation does not follow a question or a hypothesis. People are experimenting, they have an idea, it's like, well, if I do this, maybe this will happen, if I do that, this will happen. So that's only a partial uh, um, um, scientific uh, method when you start engaging experimentation with, uh, you know, a possible parameter of something occurring, and then you have innovation or this is different than invention where you actually spontaneously engage in a dialectic thought of inventing something new, but that doesn't usually involve any issues with uh, defining uh, the actual outcome as far as the explanation of what it is. And someone invents a new toilet seat, you don't actually have to define it. It's made out of plastic and it's a, a new patent. So in this we're not concerned with either the conclusions or the actual uh, um, uh, explanations of what that is. We're talking about... Uh, the scientific method involving uh, phenomena uh, that are not empirical and are not palpable and are not calculable because a field is not particles. And we're talking about field theory phenomena and the cult of quantum, which is absolutely atomistically based. The scientific method doesn't engage in retroductive reasoning to arrive at a correct conclusion or an explanation because when you actually do research and experimentations, you're able like, to discover a new type of phenomena, and that new type of phenomena is like, hey, we're able to apply this new type of phenomena. This would work great in a new type of electro-gizmo or maybe uh, ultra-fine uh, bitrate uh, read-write mechanism for data storage. None of that engages in the explanation of what something is. Um, most all scientific method begins at experimentation and data is obtained upon which uh, insane conclusions are reached. This is the serious issue. Uh, um, specifically, the scientific method is like a huge donut with a, with a hole in the center. And the hole in the center is the explanation. We're talking about the scientific method as applied to uh, all electrical field theory phenomena and actually what electricity is and... Uh, um, new uh, sort of uh, thinking about like what is the nature of light? What is the nature of magnetism? I own every book ever made, ever written on magnetism and there's never been an explanation of what magnetism is. And if you go to the world's largest makers of magnets and go to their frequently asked question page, they'll say, well how does a magnet work? We have no idea. This is like companies that make billion dollars worth of magnets every year. Billions of dollars. And uh, when we actually discover it, we'll say, well magnetic moment. Well magnetic moment has in relation to geomagnetic precession, but no one, as I've defined in hundreds and hundreds of videos, has ever explained what magnetism is, how it works, nor have they ever defined a field, because a field is not palpable, nor is it calculable. All Maxwellian field equations, for example, are measured in effect over a period of time with a certain vector. So it's a vector over a period of time with a given effect, measured in joules, volts, watts, so on and so forth. Maxwellian field equations never define a field. So we can actually calculate to make predictions based upon established math, which is accurate and is repeatable. You know, this is actually how we launch spaceship into space. We actually use, uh, you know, well-established math equations for uh, determining vectors and distances and interactions, you know, based upon Maxwellian field equations and also upon Newtonian laws, right? inverse square laws, so on and so forth, but these are not explanations of what's going on. No one's actually ever defined a field. And, uh, you know, gravity is a perfect example, since gravity is this, uh, you know, uh, seemingly autonomous field modality that all modern science believes is something different from dielectricity or magnetism or electricity, but it's not. It is just simply a different modality of the dielectric and the magnetic in a different uh, expression. In this case, non-point source uh, dielectric acceleration is what we call gravity. But this is as stupid as a child thinking that ice is one thing, water is another, and steam yet another thing. Here's a perfect example. Now, the Egyptians, we all know, and we're not talking about magic stuff of the Egyptians may, but the Egyptians, well-established fact, had a level of technology uh, in many arenas that is well beyond our own. We have no idea how they deal with this. Aliens didn't do it, okay? Humans did it. <laughs> Let's leave that off the side. We're able to join blocks with laser-like precision. We got Puma Punku and countless other examples. I mean, the Egyptians had these amazing science, and they had their own math, of course. We know this for a fact, obviously. But their conclusions are religious bullshit. You know, 
The reason why this occurs is because Osiris is over there and does that, you know, all sorts of religious crap. It is the case also, too, that uh, the modern Catholic and the old Catholic Church and other religions engaged in a lot of science. So we have to remember that original science was rooted in uh, religious dogmatic institutions. And they did love science. The only problem was is that their explanations for their science, which was repeatable and real science, was based in religious bullshit. Yeah? This, the scientific method is just like this ring magnet or like a donut. You know, we've got a We've got a, a ring of question, research, hypothesis, hypothesis, experimentation, data collection, analysis, repeatability, and uh, collective conclusions. Like, hey, Bob, I got this new experiment. If you insert chemical A and chemical B, you know, this new amazing phenomena happens, and maybe we can make a new type of watch radio, like the super miniature. Yeah, yeah, I confirm your results. I did the same experiment. I tested your math, that's all wonderful. That's the scientific method, but the scientific method has nothing to do with the explanation of a phenomena. All of quantum is based upon this. Uh, observations and conclusions and the math has nothing to do with the explanation of what is observed, the math for same, or the repetition. Math never explains anything. It only defines the parameters of the mechanics of how something works or interacts with something else but it never explains. People love to talk about the golden ratio. That's my favorite one. That's a really perfect example. Hey, golden ratio. What is the golden ratio? Well, it's 1.618033. You know, that's a description. That's not an explanation. Actually, also too, very importantly, all the way back to the ancient Greeks, I've got everything ever written on the golden ratio. And I guarantee you, 99.999% of everybody, and I've done this test myself, I say, what's, what's the goal? You know what the golden ratio? Yeah, I know what the golden ratio is, fat boy. Well, explain to me. Well, the golden ratio is 1.618033, or it's the Fibonacci sequence is 1123583, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we see the spirals in nature. And I said, that, that's, that's a description. That's not an explanation. I asked you to define, you stupid knuckle dragging Neanderthal. What? Explain. Key word here is explain. Explanation is that big hole in the scientific experimentation. Eh, right there. We're explanation is something different. I said to ask you to explain the importance, the fundamental big picture of what the golden ratio is. None of them can do it. I love asking people, like I said, do you know what the golden ratio is? Sure, I know what the golden ratio is. I watch lots of YouTube videos on that topic. Good. Explain it. And then what they'll do after you ask them that question is that they'll define it. I said that's the mathematical parameters for what we conventionally call the golden ratio, but you did not explain what it is, nor its importance, nor its interconnectivity, nor the fundamental conclusion of what it is. You didn't explain it at all. Well, uh, I guess so. This is the same thing. I mean, all of this follows the exact same stuff you see in the scientific methodology that uh, field theory is now found within the branch of physics, but fields are not physical, and they're certainly not particle-based. And uh, while well, the math for interactions like the Maxwellian field equations define interactions over vectors over a period of time, they've never defined what a field is. Nor does the scientific method ever engage in the correct explanation of like new phenomena, like Joe Blow was in a science lab mixing chemical A, chemical B, and holy shazam, something new was discovered. He thought if he mixed these two things, something might happen, and he repeated the experiment, and he confirmed it with 100 other scientists, and then we have a new technology. Well, that doesn't mean anything because you didn't explain what it is. Well, sure it is. It's a quantum interaction between the tuntling of the Z particle and the, the quasi-particle interaction in a uh, non-realistic uh, superimposition idealized state from the quantum black hole from the future. <laughs> you know? This is why modern science is bullshit, not because it doesn't invent and create new things, most of which is stabbing in the dark blind experimentation. Well, about half of it is. But the scientific method never sets up a parameter, nor is it the basis or foundation for an explanation of a phenomena, specifically when it uh, enjoins uh, things like uh, all the stuff that we call quantum. Uh, quantum interaction, quantum this, quantum that. Quantum is a BS word that actually means nothing. So what is this? Well, it's a quantum tunneling. Well, what's that? Well, that's quantum gravity. What's it? Well, that's a quantum 
craziness. You know, like Schrodinger cat, the cat paradox, you know, the cat's neither alive nor dead. <laughs> That's a quantum, quantum state. Yeah, the cat isn't a quantum. Quantum is the biggest bullshit word that the modern 21st century has ever come up with. The question is, you know, how to, how to test you know, experiment, the data, the results, make sure it's repeatable, the beliefs and the speculations that enter in, but these are not explanations of what's actually going on. Like I said, the religions throughout uh, thousands of years, uh, Catholic Church hasn't existed that long, obviously, but religions have always done and been extremely interested in science, as long as the explanations had to do something with religious BS, because, you know, the science can't go against that. And well, the same thing exists today. It's absolutely no different, except we've actually supplanted uh, the religious BS for uh, atomistic BS and quantum BS, specifically as it pertains to field theory and uh, how uh, electric... Because it's still called electrical theory for a reason, because there's no branch of modern science that actually understands what a field is, nor do they ever define a field. Um, most all scientific methods, like I said, begin with experimentation. They don't begin with a question and a hypothesis. Although some certainly does, uh, much less to a, um, to a much less uh, degree today than it did uh, back when the early inventions started. We're talking about the early invention of explosion of inventions somewhere around. I don't know if the explosion of invention started around the early uh, 1800s. Um, so scientific method is a huge donut of empirical thought, experiment and discovery with a huge hole in the center where the explanation is a wholly is a wholly 100 percent unconnected to the scientific method itself. Um, so the scientific method is only a method. This is the important part. I'm going to end the video here. Scientific method is only a method. It is a method of discovery to arrive at results. Neither the, the discovery nor the method are connected to explanations which require both wisdom and logic and are unconnected to any and all experimentations results, conclusions, repetition of experimentations, or corroboration with other scientists. Scientific method, because, you know, we've... Here's a perfect example. Magnets exist, and neodymium uh, iron boron, uh, the discovery of that was not happenstance, was close to happenstance, but the neodymium iron boron magnets that are used in cell phones and computers and cameras and every freaking thing we use today, there's, there's nobody on Earth that's ever explained what magnetism is or how a magnet works, nor have they ever explained instantaneous action at a distance. I said, I have every book ever written on magnets. This is only one example. Like light bulbs. You know, there's been like a billion types of light bulbs invented. LEDs, uh, uh, crap fluorescence, all sorts of freaky-deaky mercury arc lamps. There's a bazillion types of light bulbs using different patented technologies. But nobody, <laughs> this is a fact, not my opinion, nobody that's ever invented a new type of light bulb or lighting device design ever explained what light is and how that differentiates out from illumination or the nature of light nor define. You see, these inventions have nothing to do with the actual explanations of how they work. People don't realize that discovery, invention, and uh, innovation are not in any way connected either to the explanations nor the correct explanations, most importantly, of how these devices actually work or their meaning. Um, it re requires logic and wisdom. The inventive mind is wonderful. I mean, here I am sitting around with all this great technology, which was created through the scientific method. A lot of it was pure genius, however. Um, what percentage of that we can certainly argue, but scientific method and the wonderful inventions around me, including the camera that's recording my ugly face right now, have nothing to do with the explanations of how they work. I mean, you, you know, if you read any article like on a digital camera, you know, some asshole, actually every asshole article out there, says, you know, the photons are passing through the glass and striking this. There's no such thing as a photon. The technology is wonderful, but that doesn't mean that these idiots that invent and discover and patent and innovate have any idea, nor can they explain you know, what they have discovered or corroborated or discovered and corroborated. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. Whether you agree with this video or not, I absolutely don't care because I am correct on this. So that's hubristic and egotistical. It may be, but it's also correct. Thank you.